Hi again. In the last couple episodes, we talked about economic systems and how they can create inequality, resource overuse, and crises. In this episode, however, we start talking about power, the state, and why it needs to be replaced. Hi, everyone. If you saw the last couple videos in this series, you learned about how capitalism functions, how it creates and intensifies inequality, how it divides society into competing groups, how it promotes the rampant overuse of resources, whether or not we even need the resulting products, and we talked about how it is unstable and prone to crisis. In short, we seem to be stuck with this economic structure that creates untold amounts of suffering, stress, and misery for most people while handing a lot of luxuries and benefits to folks fortunate enough to have claimed property or organized a particular system of production. In this video, however, we sort of leave some of that discussion behind and look at why this system persists. And to do that, we have to talk about power, and we have to talk about the state. So, okay, first off, what do I mean by the state? Well, I don't mean a state like a subdivision of the U.S., like the state of Arizona or the state of New Hampshire. What social scientists mean when they talk about the state is the decision-making institution, the political apparatus that runs a particular country's territory. So the state includes all sorts of things like the legislatures that make the laws, the executive branch that applies those laws and rules, the courts that enforce them and mediate disagreements about them, but it's even bigger than that. It's also the police, the Border Patrol, the military, and many other institutions that basically create the rules of the game in a society and enforce them. Sometimes people will use the term government here as a synonym for the state, but some theorists make the distinction that the state is this whole apparatus that is somewhat permanent and could owe its structure and function to people who died long ago, while governments are the organizations which may kind of come and go that run those institutions. A good analogy is that you can think of the state as a ship, and the government is basically like its crew. So regardless of the terminology that we use here, the point is that these are really big institutions that sort of run everything, they set the rules, and they enforce them. Now there are many theories about how states came to be, why human societies have developed them, what kinds of decision-making structures count as a state and which ones don't, but we aren't going to get too far into those debates here in this short video. Our focus is going to be on understanding how people often attempt to get states to change societies for the better and why so many of those attempts fail. To do that, we have to think about a state as essentially a machine that produces structures. What do I mean by structures? Well, this is best explained by examining two key concepts that I plan to use in this episode, structure, and agency. Simply put, agency means the ability to do something. Perhaps you want to buy a bottle of whiskey. You may have some money in your pocket and there's liquor stored nearby, so we could say that you have the agency to go get a bottle of whiskey. Agency is basically like freedom. If you have the agency to do something, then you can just do it. Structure, however, refers to the things that restrict your freedom in a given situation in some way. Structures limit your agency. They narrow the field of choices that you can make, and they come in many different forms. Going back to the example of getting some whiskey, one obvious structure could be a cop on the corner telling you that you can't get it. That is one of the more obvious ways your agency could be limited. But there are other ways, too. What if there is a law saying that alcohol can't be sold until 9 a.m. and at 7 a.m.? Well, your freedom to get whiskey is limited by that structure. Or, if you live in a place that doesn't allow the sale of alcohol, that also can keep you from doing it. Structures may also not be laws at all. The way that places are arranged are themselves structures that can limit your ability to do something. What if there simply is no liquor store anywhere nearby? Or someone has built a wall or a freeway between you and the liquor store? Structures can also be economic. What if you just simply don't make enough money to be able to afford whiskey? that also restricts your agency to get it. Structures can also be social expectations that aren't really laws per se, but can still influence your choices, like the expectations that people around you might have that you shouldn't be drinking whiskey because it's improper to do so on a Sunday morning at 7 a.m. before taking the kids to church. 
Patty, why are you already drunk? So in short, our agency is usually limited by all kinds of structures in all sorts of ways, from the disapproval we might get from our friends and families, to what we have to do to keep our job, to what we do to make money, to just the decisions by others about what things are close by or far away from us. One fascinating thing about looking at concepts of structure and agency is that when you start thinking about it, you start seeing the ways many of our everyday choices are influenced by structures of many kinds. For instance, if you are a student, why are you going to class? Well, you may actually like what you are learning and want to go to class, but you may also be getting nudged toward making that decision based on various structures, like the fact that the instructor may give you a bad grade if you don't, or that you feel that completing this particular class helps you finish a degree, and that you may want that degree because you think it will give you a better chance at getting the kind of job that you want later in life. Or maybe you just go to class because your friends or parents expect you to. These are all structures of different kinds. And all these different structures may be internalized within you at the same time while you're making that decision about whether you ought to go to class today or if you are going to blow it off and stay in bed. The fact that structures totally surround us brings up an important question. Where do they all come from? Well, ironically, they actually come from agency. Somebody somewhere at some time had the agency, the ability, to make a decision that creates a structure that affects you today. Some group of people had the agency to get together and decide you can't buy whiskey at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. It just wasn't you. Those people may not even be alive anymore, but you are living with one of their ghosts. In this case, it's the enduring structure that they made about liquor laws. Many of the structures we live with, like our political institutions, our laws, whether we own property or not, the layouts of our cities and transportation networks, what are considered moral or immoral actions, and so on, weren't made during our lifetimes. Our agency is often limited not just by those people around us, but by decisions made by people who are long dead. Now this brings us to the idea of power. The simple fact is that some groups of people have been able to make certain structures that they benefit from and which furthers their beliefs and agendas, and some groups of people who really haven't had that ability. The state can be seen as both a constellation of structures and as a machine of sorts that generates and enforces structures that certain groups desire. And then the state imposes those structures on others who don't have their hands on the levers of the apparatus of the state. So if you recall from the last two videos about capitalism, we talked about the fact that the surplus value created by people who work for others is appropriated by the owners. How do they manage to do this? Well, with the help of a state that says this is how it should be and which is willing and able to be violent to enforce that structure. This now brings us to a really important point in this video series where we ask the question, if we find ourselves in a world where inequality, resource overuse, injustice, and social exclusion are big problems that are clearly getting worse, can't we just use the existing state to rein these things in and set things right? Well, the short answer is no. In the rest of this series, we'll look exactly at why reforming the existing state doesn't really work and why instead we need to replace the state.